The Indian Space Research Organisation is the space agency of the Government of India headquartered in the city of Bengaluru. Its vision is to "...harness space technology for national development while pursuing space science research and planetary exploration." Formed in 1969, ISRO superseded the erstwhile Indian National Committee for Space Research established in 1962 by the efforts of independent India's first Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru, and his close aide and scientist Vikram Sarabhai. The establishment of ISRO thus institutionalized space activities in India. It is managed by the Department of Space, which reports to the Prime Minister of India. ISRO built India's first satellite, Aryabhata, which was launched by the Soviet Union on 19 April 1975. It was named after the mathematician Aryabhata. In 1980, Rohini became the first satellite to be placed in orbit by an Indian-made launch vehicle, SLV-3. ISRO subsequently developed two other rockets, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle PSLV for launching satellites into polar orbits and the Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle GSLV for placing satellites into geostationary orbits. These rockets have launched numerous communications satellites and Earth observation satellites. Satellite navigation systems like Gagan and IRNSS have been deployed. In January 2014, ISRO used an indigenous cryogenic engine in a GSLV D5 launch of the GSAT 14. ISRO sent a lunar orbiter, CHANDRAYAAN 1, on the 22nd of October 2008 and a Mars orbiter, Mars Orbiter Mission, on the 5th of November 2013, which entered Mars orbit on the 24th of September 2014, making India the first nation to succeed on its first attempt to Mars and ISRO the fourth space agency in the world as well as the first space agency in Asia to reach Mars orbit. On 18 June 2016, ISRO set a record with a launch of 20 satellites in a single payload, one being a satellite from Google. On 15 February 2017, ISRO launched 104 satellites in a single rocket PSLV -C and created a world record. ISRO launched its heaviest rocket, Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle Mark III GSLV -MK3, on 5 June 2017 and placed a communications satellite GSAT-19 in orbit. With this launch, ISRO became capable of launching four-ton heavy satellites. Future plans include the development of unified launch vehicle, small satellite launch vehicle, development of a reusable launch vehicle, human spaceflight, controlled soft lunar landing, interplanetary probes, and a solar spacecraft mission. <laughs> Formative years Modern space research in India is most visibly traced to the 1920s, when the scientist S. K. Mitra conducted a series of experiments leading to the sounding of the ionosphere by application of ground-based radio methods in Calcutta. Later, Indian scientists like C. V. Raman and Meghnad Sahar contributed to scientific principles applicable in space sciences. However, it was the period after 1945 that saw important developments being made in coordinated space research in India. Organized space research in India was spearheaded by two scientists, Vikram Sarabhai—founder of the Physical Research Laboratory at Ahmedabad—and Homi Baba, who established the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in 1945. Initial experiments in space sciences included the study of cosmic radiation, high altitude and airborne testing, deep underground experimentation at the Kola mines one of the deepest mining sites in the world and studies of the upper atmosphere. Studies were carried out at research laboratories, universities, and independent locations. In 1950, the Department of Atomic Energy was founded with Baba as its secretary. The department provided funding for space research throughout India. During this time, tests continued on aspects of meteorology and the Earth's magnetic field, a topic that was being studied in India since the establishment of the observatory at Kalaba in 1823. In 1954, the Uttar Pradesh State Observatory was established at the foothills of the Himalayas. 
The Rangpur Observatory was set up in 1957 at Osmania University, Hyderabad. Space research was further encouraged by the technically inclined Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru. In 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1 and opened up possibilities for the rest of the world to conduct a space launch. The Indian National Committee for Space Research was set up in 1962 by Jawaharlal Nehru, first Prime Minister of India. Goals and objectives The prime objective of ISRO is to use space technology in its application to various national tasks. The Indian space program was driven by the vision of Vikram Sarabhai, considered the father of the Indian space program. As he said in 1969, There are some who question the relevance of space activities in a developing nation. To us, there is no ambiguity of purpose. We do not have the fantasy of competing with the economically advanced nations in the exploration of the Moon or the planets or manned spaceflight. But we are convinced that if we are to play a meaningful role nationally, and in the community of nations, we must be second to none in the application of advanced technologies to the real problems of man and society. Former President of India, APJ Abdul Kalam, said, Many individuals with myopic vision questioned the relevance of space activities in a newly independent nation, which was finding it difficult to feed its population. Their vision was clear if Indians were to play meaningful role in the community of nations, they must be second to none in the application of advanced technologies to their real-life problems. They had no intention of using it as a means of displaying our might. India's economic progress has made its space program more visible and active as the country aims for greater self-reliance in space technology. In 2008, India launched as many as 11 satellites, including nine from other countries and went on to become the first nation to launch 10 satellites on one rocket. ISRO has put into operation two major satellite systems, Indian National Satellites (INSAT) for communication services and Indian Remote Sensing (IRS) satellites for management of natural resources. In July 2012, Abdul Kalam said that research was being done by ISRO and DRDO for developing cost reduction technologies for access to space. Organization structure and facilities ISRO is managed by the Department of Space of the Government of India. DOS itself falls under the authority of the Space Commission and manages the following agencies and institutes Indian Space Research Organisation Vikram Sarabhai Space Centre VSSC, Tiruvanantapuram Liquid Propulsion Systems Centre LPSC, Tiruvanantapuram Satish Dewan Space Centre SDSC Shah, Sriharikota ISRO Propulsion Complex IPRC, Mahendragiri. ISRO Satellite Center ISAC, Bangalore. Space Applications Center SAC, Ahmedabad. National Remote Sensing Center NRSC, Hyderabad. ISRO Inertial Systems Unit IISU, Tiruvanantapuram. Development and Educational Communication Unit DECU, Ahmedabad. Master Control Facility MCF, Hassan, Karnataka ISRO Telemetry, Tracking and Command Network ISTRAC, Bangalore Laboratory for Electro-Optics Systems LEOs, Bangalore Indian Institute of Remote Sensing IIRS, Dehradun Antrix Corporation, the marketing arm of ISRO, Bangalore Physical Research Laboratory PRL, Ahmedabad. National Atmospheric Research Laboratory NARL, Gadanki, Andhra Pradesh Northeastern Space Applications Center NISAC, Umium. Semiconductor Laboratory SCL, Mohali. Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology IIST, Tiruvanantapuram, India's Space University
Topic: Research facilities. Topic: Test facilities. Topic: Construction and launch facilities. Topic: Tracking and control facilities. Topic: Human resource development. Topic: Commercial wing Antrix Corporation. Set up as the marketing arm of ISRO, Antrix's job is to promote products, services and technology developed by ISRO. Other facilities Aerospace Command of India Balasore Rocket Launching Station Adisha Development and Educational Communication Unit DECU Indian Regional Navigational Satellite System IRNSS Indian National Committee for Space Research INCOSPAR Indian Space Science Data Center ISSDC Integrated Space Cell Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics IUCAA ISRO Inertial Systems Unit Tiruvananthapuram National Deep Space Observation Center Regional Remote Sensing Service Centers RRSSC Spacecraft Control Center SCC Topic Launch Vehicle Fleet During the 1960s and 1970s, India initiated its own launch vehicle program owing to geopolitical and economic considerations. In the 1960s to 1970s, the country developed a sounding rockets program, and by the 1980s, research had yielded the Satellite Launch Vehicle 3 and the more advanced Augmented Satellite Launch Vehicle ASLV, complete with operational supporting infrastructure. ISRO further applied its energies to the advancement of launch vehicle technology resulting in the creation of PSLV and GSLV technologies. Topic: Satellite Launch Vehicle SLV Status: Decommissioned Satellite Launch Vehicle, usually known by its abbreviation SLV or SLV-3, was a four-stage solid propellant light launcher. It was intended to reach a height of 500 kilometers (310 miles) and carry a payload of 40 kilograms (88 pounds). Its first launch took place in 1979 with two more in each subsequent year and the final launch in 1983. Only two of its four test flights were successful. Topic: Augmented Satellite Launch Vehicle ASLV. Status: Decommissioned Augmented Satellite Launch Vehicle, usually known by its abbreviation ASLV, was a five-stage solid propellant rocket with the capability of placing a 150 kg (330 pound) satellite into low Earth orbit. This project was started by the ISRO during the early 1980s to develop technologies needed for a payload to be placed into a geostationary orbit. Its design was based on satellite launch vehicle. The first launch test was held in 1987, and after that three others followed in 1988, 1992 and 1994, out of which only two were successful, before it was decommissioned. <laughs> Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle PSLV. 
Status, Activeth Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, commonly known by its abbreviation PSLV, is an expendable launch system developed by ISRO to allow India to launch its Indian Remote Sensing satellites into sun-synchronous orbits. PSLV can also launch small satellites into Geostationary Transfer Orbit GTO. The reliability and versatility of the PSLV is proven by the fact that it has launched, as of 2014, 71 satellites, spacecraft 31 Indian and 40 foreign into a variety of orbits. The maximum number of satellites launched by the PSLV in a single launch is 104. In the PSLV C-37 launch on the 15th of February 2017. Decade-wise summary of PSLV launches. Topic: <laughs> Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle (GSLV). Status, Activeth Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle, usually known by its abbreviation GSLV, is an expendable launch system developed to enable India to launch its INSAT-type satellites into geostationary orbit and to make India less dependent on foreign rockets. At present, it is ISRO's second heaviest satellite launch vehicle and is capable of putting a total payload of up to 5 tons to low Earth orbit. The vehicle is built by India, originally with a cryogenic engine purchased from Russia, while the ISRO developed its own cryogenic engine. The first version of the GSLV GSLV -MK -I, using the Russian cryogenic stage, became operational in 2004, after an unsuccessful first launch in 2001 and a second, successful development launch in 2003. The first attempt to launch the GSLV MK 2 with an Indian built cryogenic engine, GSLV F06 carrying GSAT 5P, failed on 25 December 2010. The initial evaluation implies that loss of control for the strap on boosters caused the rocket to veer from its intended flight path, forcing a programmed detonation. 64 seconds into the first stage of flight, the rocket began to break up due to the acute angle of attack. The body housing the third stage, the cryogenic stage, incurred structural damage, forcing the range safety team to initiate a programmed detonation of the rocket. On the 5th of January 2014, GSLV D5 launched GSAT-14 into intended orbit. This marked first successful flight using indigenous cryogenic engine CE7.5, making India the sixth country in the world to have this technology. Again on the 27th of August 2015, GSLV D6 launched GSAT6 into the transfer orbit. ISRO used the indigenously developed cryogenic upper stage CUS third time on board in this GSLV flight on the 8th of September 2016 GSLV F05 launched INSAT3DR a weather satellite weighing 2211 kilograms 4874 pounds into a geostationary transfer orbit GTO GSLV is designed to inject 2 to 5 tons, 2.2 to 5.5 tons class of satellites into GTO. The launch took place from the second launch pad at Satish Dhawan Space Center Shah SDSC Shah Sriharikota. The GSLV F05 flight was the first operational flight of GSLV carrying the cryogenic upper stage CUS. The indigenously developed CUS was carried on board for the fourth time during the GSLV F05 flight. GSLV F05 vehicle is configured with all its three stages including the CUS similar to the ones flown during the previous GSLV D5 and D6 missions in January 2014 and August 2015. Decade-wise summary of GSLV launches Topic: Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle Mark III (GSLV-3). Status: Aktivexlevad MK-3 is a launch vehicle. It is capable to launch four-ton satellites into geosynchronous transfer orbit. 
GSLV MK3 is a three-stage vehicle with a 110-ton (120-ton) C or liquid propellant stage L110, flanked by two 200-ton (220-ton) solid propellant strap-on booster motors S200. The upper stage is cryogenic with a propellant loading of 25-ton C25. The vehicle has a liftoff mass of about 640 tons and be 43.43 meters tall. According to ISRO, the payload fairing has a diameter of 5 meters and a payload volume of 100 cubic meters. It will allow India to become less dependent on foreign rockets for heavy lifting. On the 18th of December 2014, ISRO conducted an experimental test flight of GSLV MK3 carrying a crew module to be used in future human space missions. This suborbital test flight demonstrated the performance of GSLV MK3 in the atmosphere. GSLV MK IIID 1 carrying communication satellite GSAT 19 lifted off from the second launch pad at Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sriharikota on 5 June 2017 and placed the communication satellite into the geosynchronous transfer orbit 16 minutes after takeoff. GSAT-19 satellite with a liftoff mass of 3,136 kg is the communication satellite of India, configured around the ISRO's standard I-3K bus. Decade-wise summary of GSLV-3 launches <laughs> Satellite programs India's first satellite, the Aryabhata, was launched by the Soviet Union on 19 April 1975 from Kapustin Yar using a Cosmos 3M launch vehicle. This was followed by the Rohini series of experimental satellites, which were built and launched indigenously. At present, ISRO operates a large number of Earth observation satellites. The INSAT series INSAT Indian National Satellite System is a series of multi-purpose geostationary satellites launched by ISRO to satisfy the telecommunications, broadcasting, meteorology and search and rescue needs of India. Commissioned in 1983, INSAT is the largest domestic communication system in the Asia-Pacific region. It is a joint venture of the Department of Space, Department of Telecommunications, India Meteorological Department, All India Radio and Doordarshan. The overall coordination and management of INSAT system rests with the Secretary level INSAT Coordination Committee. The IRS series Indian Remote Sensing Satellites IRS are a series of Earth observation satellites, built, launched and maintained by ISRO. The IRS series provides remote sensing services to the country. The Indian Remote Sensing Satellite System is the largest collection of remote sensing satellites for civilian use in operation today in the world. All the satellites are placed in polar sun synchronous orbit and provide data in a variety of spatial, spectral and temporal resolutions to enable several programs to be undertaken relevant to national development. The initial versions are composed of the 1A, B, C, D nomenclature. The later versions are named based on their area of application including Oceansat, Cartasar, Resourcesat. Topic. Radar imaging satellites ISRO currently operates two radar imaging satellites RISAT-1 RISAT was launched from Sriharikota Spaceport on 26 April 2012 on board a PSLV. RISAT-1 carries a C band IEEE C band synthetic aperture radar SAR payload operating in a multipolarization and multi-resolution mode and can provide images with coarse fine and high spatial resolutions. India also operates RISAT-2 which was launched in 2009 and acquired from Israel at a cost 110 million dollars.
Topic: Other satellites. ISRO has also launched a set of experimental geostationary satellites known as the GSAT series. Kalpana-1, ISRO's first dedicated meteorological satellite, was launched by the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle on 12 September 2002. The satellite was originally known as METSAT-1. In February 2003 it was renamed to Kalpana-1 by the Indian Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee in memory of Kalpana Chawla, a NASA astronaut of Indian origin who perished in the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster. ISRO has also launched the Indo-French satellite SARAL on 25 February 2013, 12.31 SARAL or satellite with Argos and Altica is a cooperative altimetry technology mission. It is being used for monitoring the ocean surface and sea levels. Altica will measure ocean surface topography with an accuracy of 8 mm, against 2.5 cm on average using current generation altimeters, and with a spatial resolution of 2 km. In June 2014, ISRO launched French Earth Observation Satellite Spot 7, mass 714 kg, along with Singapore's first nano satellite Velox I, Canada's satellite Connex 5, Germany's satellite AISAT, via the PSLV C20. Launch vehicle. It was ISRO's fourth commercial launch. Topic: <inaudible> South Asia satellite. The South Asia satellite GSAT-9 is a geosynchronous communications and meteorology satellite by the Indian Space Research Organisation (ISRO) for the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation (SAARC) region. The satellite was launched on the 5th of May 2017. During the 18th SAARC summit held in Nepal in 2014, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi mooted the idea of a satellite serving the needs of SAARC member nations, part of his neighborhood first policy. One month after sworn in as Prime Minister of India, in June 2014 Modi asked ISRO to develop a SAARC satellite, which can be dedicated as a gift to the neighbors. It is a satellite for the SAARC region with 12 Ku band transponders 36 MHz each and launch using the Indian Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle GSLV MK2. The total cost of launching the satellite is estimated to be about 2,350 million rupees, 235 crore rupees. The cost associated with the launch was met by the government of India. The satellite enables full range of applications and services in the areas of telecommunication and broadcasting applications viz television TV, direct-to-home very small aperture terminals VSATs, tele-education, telemedicine and disaster management support. <laughs> Gagan Satellite Navigation System The Ministry of Civil Aviation has decided to implement an indigenous satellite-based regional GPS augmentation system also known as Space-Based Augmentation System SBAS, as part of the Satellite-Based Communications, Navigation and Surveillance CNS, Air Traffic Management ATM, plan for civil aviation. The Indian SBAS system has been given an acronym GAGAN, GPS-Aided Geo-Augmented Navigation. A national plan for satellite navigation including implementation of Technology Demonstration System TDS over the Indian Air Space as a proof of concept has been prepared jointly by Airports Authority of India AAI and ISRO. TDS was completed during 2007 by installing eight Indian reference stations at eight Indian airports and linked to the Master Control Centre located near Bangalore. The first Gagan navigation payload has been fabricated and it was proposed to be flown on GSAT-4 during April 2010. However, GSAT-4 was not placed in orbit as GSLV-D3 could not complete the mission. Two more Gagan payloads will be subsequently flown, one each on two geostationary satellites, GSAT-8 and GSAT-10. 
On 12 May 2012, ISRO announced the successful testing of its indigenous cryogenic engine for 200 seconds for its forthcoming GSLVD-5 flight. IRNSS Satellite Navigation System IRNSS is an independent regional navigation satellite system being developed by India. It is designed to provide accurate position information service to users in India as well as the region extending up to 1,500 km from its boundary, which is its primary service area. IRNSS will provide two types of services, namely, Standard Positioning Service and Restricted Service and is expected to provide a position accuracy of better than 20 meters in the primary service area. It is an autonomous regional satellite navigation system being developed by Indian Space Research Organization, which is under total control of Indian government. The requirement of such a navigation system is driven by the fact that access to global navigation satellite systems like GPS is not guaranteed in hostile situations. ISRO initially planned to launch the constellation of satellites between 2012 and 2014 but the project got delayed by nearly two years. ISRO on 1 July 2013, at 23.41 IST launched from Sriharikota the first Indian navigation satellite the IRNSS-1A. The IRNSS-1A was launched aboard PSLV-C-22. The constellation would comprise seven satellites of I-1K bus each weighing around 1450 kg, with three satellites in the geostationary Earth orbit and four in geosynchronous Earth orbit the constellation would be completed around April 2016. On the 4th of April 2014, at 17:14 IST, ISRO has launched IRNSS-1B from Sriharikota, its second of seven IRNSS series. 19 minutes after launch, PSLV C-24 was injected into its orbit. IRNSS-1C was launched on the 16th of October 2014, and IRNSS-1D on the 28th of March 2015. On the 20th of January 2016, 9:31 hours IST, IRNSS-1E was launched aboard PSLV C-31 from Satish Dhawan Space Center (SDSC) Shah, Sriharikota. On 10 March 2016, 431 hours IST IRNSS 1F was launched aboard PSLV C 32 from Satish Dewan Space Center SDSC Shah, Sriharikota. On 28 April 2016, 1250 hours IST IRNSS 1G was launched aboard PSLV XL C 33 from Satish Dewan Space Center SDSC Shah, Sriharikota. This satellite is the seven and the last in the IRNSS system and completes India's own navigation system. As of January 2016, ISRO was in the process of developing four backup satellites to the constellation of existing IRNSS satellites. On the 31st of August 2017, India's ISRO failed in its attempt to launch its eighth regional navigation satellite, IRNSS-1H, from Sriharikota at 7 p.m. The satellite got stuck in the fourth stage of the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle PSLV C-39. <laughs> Human Spaceflight Program In 2009, the Indian Space Research Organisation proposed a budget of 12,400 crore rupees $1.7 billion for its human spaceflight program. According to the Space Commission, which recommended the budget, an uncrewed flight will be launched after seven years from the final approval and a crewed mission will be launched after seven years of funding. If realized in the stated time frame, India will become the fourth nation, after the USSR, USA and China, to successfully carry out crewed missions indigenously. Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, announced in his Independence Day address of August 15, 2018 that India will send astronauts into space by 2022 through the Gaganyaan mission. 
After the announcement, ISRO chairman, Sivan, said ISRO has developed most of the technologies needed such as crew module and crew escape system, and that the project would cost less than 10,000 crore rupees and would include sending at least three Indians to space, 300 to 400 kilometers above in a spacecraft for at least seven days using a GSLV MK3 launch vehicle. Topic. Technology demonstrations The Space Capsule Recovery Experiment SCRE or more commonly SRE or SRE-1 is an experimental Indian spacecraft that was launched on January 10, 2007 using the PSLV C-7 rocket, along with three other satellites. It remained in orbit for 12 days before re entering the Earth's atmosphere and splashing down into the Bay of Bengal. The SRE 1 was designed to demonstrate the capability to recover an orbiting space capsule, and the technology for performing experiments in the microgravity conditions of an orbiting platform. It was also intended to test thermal protection, navigation, guidance, control, deceleration and flotation systems, as well as study hypersonic aerothermodynamics, management of communication blackouts, and recovery operations. A follow-up project named SRE-2 was cancelled midway after years of delay. On the 18th of December 2014, ISRO launched the Crew Module Atmospheric Reentry Experiment aboard the GSLV MK3 for a suborbital flight. The crew module separated from the rocket at an altitude of 126 kilometers and underwent free fall. The module heat shield experienced temperature in excess of 1,600 degrees Celsius. Parachutes were deployed at an altitude of 15 km to slow down the module which performed a splashdown in the Bay of Bengal. This flight was used to test orbital injection, separation and re-entry procedures and systems of the crew capsule. Also tested were the capsule separation, heat shields and aerobraking systems, deployment of parachute, retro-firing, splashdown, flotation systems and procedures to recover the crew capsule from the Bay of Bengal. On the 5th of July 2018, ISRO conducted a pad abort test of their launch abort system (LAS) at Satish Dhawan Space Center, Sriharikota. This is the first in a series of tests to qualify the critical crew escape system technology for future crewed missions. The LAS is designed to quickly pull out the crew to safety in case of emergency. <laughs> <laughs> Astronaut training and other facilities ISRO will set up an astronaut training center in Bangalore to prepare personnel for flights on board the crewed vehicle. The center will use simulation facilities to train the selected astronauts in rescue and recovery operations and survival in zero gravity, and will undertake studies of the radiation environment of space. ISRO will build centrifuges to prepare astronauts for the acceleration phase of the mission. It also plans to build a new launch pad to meet the target of launching a crewed space mission in seven years of funding clearance. This would be the third launch pad at the Satish Dhawan Space Center, Sriharikota. Crewed spacecraft ISRO is working towards an orbital crewed spacecraft that can operate for seven days in a low Earth orbit. The spacecraft, called Gaganyaan, will be the basis of the Indian Human Spaceflight Program. The capsule is being developed to carry up to three people, and a planned upgraded version will be equipped with a rendezvous and docking capability. In its maiden crewed mission, ISRO's largely autonomous three-ton capsule will orbit the Earth at 400 km in altitude for up to seven days with a two-person crew on board. The crewed vehicle is planned to be launched on ISRO's GSLV MK3 in 2022. Topic Planetary Sciences and Astronomy India's space era dawned when the first two-stage sounding rocket was launched from Thumba in 1963. There is a national balloon launching facility at Hyderabad jointly supported by TIFR and ISRO. 
This facility has been extensively used for carrying out research in high energy i.e., X and gamma ray astronomy, IR astronomy, middle atmospheric trace constituents including CFCs and aerosols, ionization, electric conductivity and electric fields, the flux of secondary particles and X-ray and gamma rays of atmospheric origin produced by the interaction of the cosmic rays is very low. This low background, in the presence of which one has to detect the feeble signal from cosmic sources is a major advantage in conducting hard X-ray observations from India. The second advantage is that many bright sources like CYG X1, Crab Nebula, Scorpius X1 and Galactic Center sources are observable from Hyderabad due to their favorable declination. With these considerations, an X-ray astronomy group was formed at TIFR in 1967 and development of an instrument with an orientable X-ray telescope for hard X-ray observations was undertaken. The first balloon flight with the new instrument was made on 28 April 1968 in which observations of Scorpius X-1 were successfully carried out. In a succession of balloon flights made with this instrument between 1968 and 1974 a number of binary X-ray sources including CYG X-1 and HER X-1, and the diffuse cosmic X-ray background were studied. Many new and astrophysically important results were obtained from these observations. One of most important achievements of ISRO in this field was the discovery of three species of bacteria in the upper stratosphere at an altitude of between 20 to 40 km. The bacteria, highly resistant to ultraviolet radiation, are not found elsewhere on Earth, leading to speculation on whether they are extraterrestrial in origin. These three bacteria can be considered to be extremophiles. Until then, the upper stratosphere was believed to be inhospitable because of the high doses of ultraviolet radiation. The bacteria were named as Bacillus isronensis in recognition of ISRO's contribution in the balloon experiments, which led to its discovery. Bacillus ayabata after India's celebrated ancient astronomer Ayabhata and Janibakta Hoyle after the distinguished astrophysicist Fred Hoyle. Astrosat The Astrosat is India's first multi-wavelength space observatory and full-fledged astronomy satellite. Its observation study includes active galactic nuclei, hot white dwarfs, pulsations of pulsars, binary star systems, supermassive black holes located at the center of the galaxies etc. Topic: Extraterrestrial exploration. Topic: Luna C H A N D R A Y A A N one. C H A N D R A Y A A N one was India's first mission to the moon. The unmanned lunar exploration mission included a lunar orbiter and an impactor called the Moon Impact Probe. ISRO launched the spacecraft using a modified version of the PSLV on the 22nd of October 2008 from Satish Dhawan Space Center, Sriharikota. The vehicle was inserted into lunar orbit on the 8th of November 2008. It carried high-resolution remote sensing equipment for visible, near-infrared, and soft and hard X-ray frequencies. During its 312 days operational period two years planned, it surveyed the lunar surface to produce a complete map of its chemical characteristics and three-dimensional topography. The polar regions were of special interest, as they possibly had ice deposits. The spacecraft carried 11 instruments, 5 Indian and 6 from foreign institutes and space agencies including NASA, ESA, Bulgarian Academy of Sciences, Brown University and other European and North American institutes, companies, which were carried free of cost. CHANDRAYAAN-1 became the first lunar mission to discover existence of water on the Moon. The CHANDRAYAAN-166 team was awarded the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics Space 2009 Award, the International Lunar Exploration Working Group's International Cooperation Award in 2008, and the National Space Society's 2009 Space Pioneer Award in the Science and Engineering category.
Topic: <laughs> Mars Orbiter Mission, Mangalayaan. The Mars Orbiter Mission MUM, informally known as Mangalayaan, was launched into Earth orbit on 5 November 2013 by the Indian Space Research Organisation and has entered Mars orbit on 24 September 2014. India thus became the first country to enter Mars orbit on its first attempt. It was completed at a record low cost of $74 million. Mum was placed into Mars orbit on the 24th of September 2014 at 8:23 a.m. IST. The spacecraft had a launch mass of 1,337 kilograms (2,948 pounds) with 15 kilograms (33 pounds) of five scientific instruments as payload. The National Space Society awarded the Mars Orbiter Mission Team the 2015 Space Pioneer Award in the Science and Engineering category. <laughs> Future projects ISRO plans to launch a number of Earth observation satellites in the near future. It will also undertake the development of new launch vehicle, crewed spacecraft, and probes to Mars and near-Earth objects. Topic: <laughs> Forthcoming satellites. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Future extraterrestrial exploration. ISRO's missions beyond Earth's orbit include CHANDRAYAAN-1 to the Moon and Mars Orbiter Mission to Mars. ISRO plans to follow up with CHANDRAYAAN-2, Mars Orbiter Mission 2, and is assessing missions to Venus, the Sun, and near-Earth objects such as asteroids and comets. Topic CHANDRAYAAN 2 CHANDRAYAAN 2 Sanskrit, Kandriana, will be India's second mission to the Moon, which will include an orbiter and lander rover module. CHANDRAYAAN 2 will be launched on India's geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle Mark III in 2019. The science goals of the mission are to further improve the understanding of the origin and evolution of the Moon. <laughs> <laughs> Mars Orbiter Mission 2 The next Mars mission, Mars Orbiter Mission 2, also called Mangalyaan 2, will likely be launched in 2021 or 2022. It will have a less elliptical orbit around Mars and could weigh seven times more than the first mission. This orbiter mission will facilitate scientific community to address the open science problems. The science payload of the proposed satellite is likely to be 100 kg. <laughs> Solar orbiter ISRO plans to carry out a mission to the Sun by the year 2019-20. The probe is named Aditya-1 and will weigh about 400 kg. It is the first Indian space-based solar coronagraph to study the corona in visible and near-IR bands. Launch of the Aditya mission was planned during the heightened solar activity period in 2012, but was postponed to 2019-2020 due to the extensive work involved in the fabrication, and other technical aspects. The main objective of the mission is to study coronal mass ejections CMEs, their properties the structure and evolution of their magnetic fields for example, and consequently constrain parameters that affect space weather. Topic. Venus and Jupiter ISRO is in the process of conducting conceptual studies to send a spacecraft to Jupiter or Venus. Jupiter's ideal launch window to send a spacecraft to Jupiter occurs every 33 months. If the mission to Jupiter is launched, a flyby of Venus would be required. Venus's row is assessing an orbiter mission to Venus called SHUKRAYAAN-1, that could launch as early as 2023 to study its atmosphere. 
Some budget has been allocated to perform preliminary studies as part of 2017–18 Indian budget under space sciences, and solicitations for potential instruments were requested in 2017 and in 2018. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Lunar missions. Besides the CHANDRAYAAN-2 lunar mission, ISRO is studying the potential for a joint lunar mission with Japan's Aerospace Exploration Agency to explore the polar regions of the Moon for water, and will be producing a proposal by March 2019. <laughs> Space transportation Topic: Small satellite launch vehicle. Small satellite launch vehicle or SSLV is in development for commercially launching small satellites with a payload of 500 kg to low Earth orbit. SSLV would be four-staged vehicle with three solid propellant-based stages and a velocity trimming module. The maiden flight is expected mid-2019 from Satish Dhawan Space Center. Topic: Reusable Launch Vehicle Technology Demonstrator (RLVTD). As a first step towards realizing a two-stage to orbit (TSTO) fully reusable launch vehicle, a series of technology demonstration missions have been conceived. For this purpose, the Winged Reusable Launch Vehicle Technology Demonstrator (RLVTD) has been configured. The RLVTD is acting as a flying test bed to evaluate various technologies such as hypersonic flight, autonomous landing, powered cruise flight and hypersonic flight using air-breathing propulsion. First in the series of demonstration trials was the hypersonic flight experiment HEX. ISRO launched the prototype's test flight from the Sriharikota spaceport in February 2016. The prototype the RLVTD, weighs around 1.5 tons and flew up to a height of 70 km. The test flight, known as HEX, was completed on 23 May 2016. The scaled-up version of could serve as flyback booster stage for wing TSTO concept. <laughs> Unified launch vehicle the ULV or Unified Launch Vehicle is a launch vehicle in development by the Indian Space Research Organisation The project's core objective is to design a modular architecture that will enable the replacement of the PSLV, GSLV MK2 and GSLV MK3 with a single family of launches. The SCE-200 engine can even be clustered for heavy launch configuration. The ULV will be able to launch 6,000 kg to 10,000 kg of payload into GTO. This will mark the renunciation of the liquid stage with Vickers engine, which uses toxic UDMH and N204. Applications <inaudible> 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 Telecommunication India uses its satellites communication network, one of the largest in the world, for applications such as land management, water resources management, natural disaster forecasting, radio networking, weather forecasting, meteorological imaging and computer communication. Business, administrative services, and schemes such as the National Informatics Center (NIC) are direct beneficiaries of applied satellite technology. Dinshaw Mystery, on the subject of practical applications of the Indian Space Program, writes: The INSAT-2 satellites also provide telephone links to remote areas, data transmission for organizations such as the National Stock Exchange, mobile satellite service communications for private operators, railways, and road transport, and broadcast satellite services, used by India's state-owned television agency as well as commercial television channels. 
India's EDUSAT educational satellite, launched aboard the GSLV in 2004, was intended for adult literacy and distance learning applications in rural areas. It augmented and would eventually replace such capabilities already provided by INSAT-3B. Resource management The IRS satellites have found applications with the Indian Natural Resource Management Programme, with regional remote sensing service centres in five Indian cities, and with remote sensing application centres in 20 Indian states that use IRS images for economic development applications. These include environmental monitoring, analyzing soil erosion and the impact of soil conservation measures, forestry management, determining land cover for wildlife sanctuaries, delineating groundwater potential zones, flood inundation mapping, drought monitoring, estimating crop acreage and deriving agricultural production estimates, fisheries monitoring, mining and geological applications such as surveying metal and mineral deposits, and urban planning. Topic military Integrated Space Cell, under the Integrated Defence Services Headquarters of the Indian Ministry of Defence, has been set up to utilise more effectively the country's space-based assets for military purposes and to look into threats to these assets. This command will leverage space technology including satellites. Unlike an aerospace command, where the Air Force controls most of its activities, the integrated space cell envisages cooperation and coordination between the three services as well as civilian agencies dealing with space. With 14 satellites, including GSAT-7A for the exclusive military use and the rest as dual-use satellites, India has fourth largest number of the satellites active in the in the sky which includes satellites for the exclusive SE of Indian Air Force and Indian Navy respectively. GSAT-7A, an advanced military communications satellite exclusively for the Indian Air Force, is similar to Indian Navy's GSAT-7, and GSAT-7A will enhance network-centric warfare capabilities of the Indian Air Force by interlinking different ground radar stations, ground airbase and airborne early warning and control aircraft such as Berry FA-50 Falcon and DRDOAEW and CS. GSAT-7A will also be used by Indian Army's Aviation Corps for its helicopters and UAVs operations. In 2013, ISO had launched GSAT-7 for the exclusive use of the Indian Navy to monitor the Indian Ocean Region with the satellite's 2,000 nautical mile footprint and real-time input capabilities to Indian warships, submarines and maritime aircraft. To boost its network-centric operations, the IAF is also likely to get another satellite GSAT-7C within a few years. India's satellites and satellite launch vehicles have had military spin-offs. While India's 93 to 124 mile, 150 to 200 kilometer range Prithvi missile is not derived from the Indian Space Program, the intermediate range Agni missile is drawn from the Indian Space Program's SLV-3. In its early years, when headed by Vikram Sarabhai and Satish Dewan, ISRO opposed military applications for its dual-use projects such as the SLV-3. Eventually, however, the Defence Research and Development Organisation based missile program borrowed human resources and technology from ISRO. Missile scientist APJ Abdul Kalam, elected president of India in 2002, who had headed the SLV-3 project at ISRO, moved to DRDO to direct India's missile program. About a dozen scientists accompanied Kalam from ISRO to DRDO, where he designed the Agni missile using the SLV-3's solid fuel first stage and a liquid fuel Prithvi missile derived second stage. The IRS and INSAT satellites were primarily intended and used for civilian economic applications, but they also offered military spin-offs. In 1996 New Delhi's Ministry of Defence temporarily blocked the use of IRS-1C by India's Environmental and Agricultural Ministries to monitor ballistic missiles near India's borders. In 1997 the Indian Air Force's Air Power Doctrine aspired to use space assets for surveillance and battle management. Topic: 
Topic: Academic Institutions like the Indira Gandhi National Open University and the Indian Institutes of Technology use satellites for scholarly applications. Between 1975 and 1976, India conducted its largest sociological program using space technology, reaching 2,400 villages through video programming in local languages aimed at educational development via minus six Austrian shillings technology developed by NASA. This experiment named Satellite Instructional Television Experiment site conducted large scale video broadcasts resulting in significant improvement in rural education. Education could reach far remote rural places with the help of above programs. Telemedicine <inaudible> 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 ISRO has applied its technology for telemedicine, directly connecting patients in rural areas to medical professionals in urban locations via satellites. Since high-quality healthcare is not universally available in some of the remote areas of India, the patients in remote areas are diagnosed and analysed by doctors in urban centres in real time via video conferencing. The patient is then advised medicine and treatment. The patient is then treated by the staff at one of the super specialty hospitals under instructions from the doctor. Mobile telemedicine vans are also deployed to visit locations in far flung areas and provide diagnosis and support to patients. Topic: <inaudible> Biodiversity Information System. ISRO has also helped implement India's Biodiversity Information System, completed in October 2002. Narupa Sen details the program, based on intensive field sampling and mapping using satellite remote sensing and geospatial modeling tools. Maps have been made of vegetation cover on a 1 to 250,000 scale. This has been put together in a web-enabled database that links gene-level information of plant species with spatial information in a BIOSPEC database of the ecological hotspot regions, namely northeastern India, western Ghats, western Himalayas and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. This has been made possible with collaboration between the Department of Biotechnology and ISRO. Cartography The Indian IRSP-5 was equipped with high-resolution panchromatic equipment to enable it for cartographic purposes. IRSP-5 was followed by a more advanced model named IRSP-6 developed also for agricultural applications. The CARTOSAT-2 project, equipped with single panchromatic camera that supported scene-specific on-spot images, succeeded the CARTOSAT-1 project. Topic international cooperation ISRO has had international cooperation since inception. Some instances are listed below, establishment of TERLS, conduct of site and step, launches of Aryabhata, Bashkara, Apple, IRSIA and IRSIB, satellites, manned space mission, etc. involved international cooperation. ISRO operates LUT, MCC under the International COSPAS, SARSAT program for search and rescue. India has established a Centre for Space Science and Technology Education in Asia and the Pacific that is sponsored by the United Nations. India hosted the second UNESCAP Ministerial Conference on Space Applications for Sustainable Development in Asia and the Pacific in November 1999. India is a member of the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, COSPARS SARSAT, International Astronautical Federation, Committee on Space Research Inter-Agency Space Debris Coordination Committee IADC, International Space University, and the Committee on Earth Observation Satellite CEOS. CHANDRAYAAN-1 carried scientific payloads from NASA, ESA, Bulgarian Space Agency, and other institutions, companies in North America and Europe. 
The United States government on 24 January 2011, removed several Indian government agencies, including ISRO, from the so-called Entity List, in an effort to drive high-tech trade and forge closer strategic ties with India. ISRO carries out joint operations with foreign space agencies, such as the Indo-French Megatropics Mission. At the International Astronautical Congress 2014 at Toronto, ISRO Chairman K. Radhakrishnan and NASA Administrator Charles Bolden signed two documents. One was regarding the 2020 launch of a NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar satellite mission to make global measurements of the causes and consequences of land surface changes. The other was to establish a pathway for future joint missions to explore Mars. Antrix Corporation, the commercial and marketing arm of ISRO, handles both domestic and foreign deals, formal cooperative arrangements in the form of memoranda of understanding or framework agreements have been signed with the following countries. The following foreign organizations also have signed various framework agreements with ISRO. In the 39th Scientific Assembly of Committee on Space Research held in Mysore, the ISRO chairman. K. Radhakrishnan called upon international synergy in space missions in view of their prohibitive cost. He also mentioned that ISRO is gearing up to meet the growing demand of service providers and security agencies in a cost-effective manner. ISRO satellites launched by foreign agencies Several ISRO satellites have been launched by foreign space agencies of Europe, USSR, Russia, and United States. The details as of December 2016 are given in the tables below. Those ISRO satellites that had a launch mass of 3000 kg or more and were launched by foreign agencies are listed in the table below. Topic: Controversies. S-band spectrum scam In India, electromagnetic spectrum, being a scarce resource for wireless communication, is auctioned by the Government of India to telecom companies for use. As an example of its value, in 2010, 20 MHz of 3G spectrum was auctioned for 677 billion rupees this part of the spectrum is allocated for terrestrial communication cell phones. However, in January 2005, Antrix Corporation commercial arm of ISRO signed an agreement with Davis Multimedia a private company formed by former ISRO employees and venture capitalists from USA for lease of S-band transponders amounting to 70 MHz of spectrum on two ISRO satellites GSAT-6 and GSAT-6A for a price of 14 billion rupees $190 million, to be paid over a period of 12 years. The spectrum used in these satellites 2500 MHz and above is allocated by the International Telecommunication Union specifically for satellite-based communication in India. Hypothetically, if the spectrum allocation is changed for utilization for terrestrial transmission and if this 70 MHz of spectrum were sold at the 2010 auction price of the 3G spectrum, its value would have been over 2000 billion rupees, 28 billion dollars. This was a hypothetical situation. However, the Controller and Auditor General of India considered this hypothetical situation and estimated the difference between the prices as a loss to the Indian government. There were lapses on implementing Government of India procedures. Antrix, ISRO had allocated the capacity of the above two satellites to Davis Multimedia on an exclusive basis, while rules said it should always be non exclusive. The cabinet was misinformed in November 2005 that several service providers were interested in using satellite capacity, while the Davis deal was already signed. Also, the Space Commission was kept in the dark while taking approval for the second satellite its cost was diluted so that cabinet approval was not needed. 
ISRO committed to spending 7.66 billion rupees, 110 million dollars of public money on building, launching and operating two satellites that were leased out for Davis. In late 2009, some ISRO insiders exposed information about the Davis Antrix deal and the ensuing investigations resulted in the deal being annulled. G. Madhavan Nair ISRO chairperson when the agreement was signed was barred from holding any post under the Department of Space. Some former scientists were found guilty of acts of commission or acts of omission. Davis and Deutsche Telekom demanded $2 billion and $1 billion, respectively, in damages. Government of India's Department of Revenue and Ministry of Corporate Affairs initiated an inquiry into Davis shareholding. The Central Bureau of Investigation concluded investigations into the Antrix Davis scam and registered a case against the accused in the Antrix Davis deal under Section 120B, besides Section 420 of IPC and Section 13 2 read with 13 1 D of PC Act, 1988 on 18 March 2015 against the then executive director of Antrix Corporation, two officials of USA based company, Bangalore based private multimedia company, and other unknown officials of Antrix Corporation or Department of Space. Davis Multimedia started arbitration proceedings against Antrix in June 2011. In September 2015, the International Court of Arbitration of the International Chamber of Commerce ruled in favor of Davis, and directed Antrix to pay $672 million billion rupees in damages to Davis. Antrix opposed the Davis plea for tribunal award in the Delhi High Court. Statistics <laughs> 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 Last updated, 29 November 2018 Total number of foreign satellites launched by ISRO, 269 32 countries. Spacecraft missions, 99 Launch missions, 70 Student satellites, 9 Reentry missions, 2 See also Avatar Reusable Launch Vehicle CNES Chairman of the Indian Space Research Organization Comparison of Asian National Space Programs Department of Space French Space Program Index of Aerospace Engineering Articles Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology List of foreign satellites launched by India List of government space agencies List of Indian satellites List of ISRO missions Space Research and Remote Sensing Organization Swami Vivekananda Planetarium Timeline of Solar System Exploration Citations <coughs> <coughs>